Hello everybody, it's Rebecca here at Weimar Maids, and as promised, I am back with my May wrap up. Yes, I just did a wrap up for January through April, but this is just May, so I can actually tell you all the thoughts about all the books that I read in the month of May. And I read a total of seven books. I had three audiobooks, so I went from having one in four months to having three in one month. And then I had an average rating of a four. So I had a two star and I had some five stars and everything in between. So in a semi-chronological but grouped order, we're gonna start off with Life of Pi by Yann Martel. This was a reread for me. I taught it this year to my 10 advanced students. So I reread it along with them as they read it for the first time, most of them. I hadn't read it in quite a long time. It's a five star reread because it's amazing and I love it. And I could talk all day about Life of Pi, which is what I do at work. So I'm not going to, but needless to say, I really like Life of Pi. I like the themes and the allegory and, and the story itself and how it makes you question and think and it's just a really fun book. It's a really fun book. There's a reason I teach it and, and yeah, so it's good. If you haven't read it, you should read it. I'll give you a mini course. How's that? Next up, we're continuing my Ann Patchett trend from April, which is what I started and I told you that I was now kind of semi-obsessed with Ann Patchett and so I've read two books in April of hers and in May I read three. So yeah, I'm still continuing on that Ann Patchett train. I'm really enjoying reading her stuff. I think she's a really talented writer and I really 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 like it. I read This is the Story of a Happy Marriage which I listened to on audiobook. She narrates it and that is a series of nonfiction essays that she has written over the span of like 20 years or so and so there are stories about writing, there's stories about marriage, there's relationships, there's stories about friendships, there's all sorts of different stories. There's a road trip story and I just really appreciated it. Her, her pieces on writing really inspired me so I just really enjoyed it. I think there were a couple that were better than others, which is why it wasn't a five. They weren't all amazing. But for the most part, I really, really, really enjoyed them. And because she narrated the audiobook, it was even better. So I gave that one a four. I also read Bel Canto, which is probably her most famous novel. And this is a fictional story set in South America, somewhere in South America. There's an opera singer and she is asked to play, to sing at a birthday party of a Japanese businessman. And at that night, at this event, at this party, there's supposed to be all these like politicians and people there from this South American country. And and so it ends up being held, like terrorists come in and, and hold everybody in the party hostage, including this opera singer. And so it's told in third person omniscient there, it jumps back and forth between multiple different narrators and characters. And it's just kind of this hostage terrorist situation, but you start to kind of sympathize with everybody in there, not just the people who are being held, held hostage, but the criminals, the terrorists, I guess you could say as well. And it's just really wonderfully written. I only gave it a four because I, I found parts of it to be a little draggy for me, especially compared to State of Wonder, which I had just read and loved and like flew through. This one wasn't as good for me, but it was still really, really, really good. So I gave it a four. And my final Ann Patchett book from the month of May was another audiobook, another nonfiction book, and it was Truth and Beauty. And she also narrates this one. And this one is all about her best friend, Lucy Greeley, who suffered from cancer when she was really young and was missing part of her jaw. And she has a story as well, it's an autobiography of a face, but I haven't read that one. So I listened, this is Ann Patchett's story of Lucy and her friendship with Lucy after Lucy's death. So it was kind of like her homage to her, her mem remembering her and things like that. And I really enjoyed it. Also it was, you know, again, it was narrated by Anne, but I felt like it didn't have the weight that I wanted it to have. And I didn't really, understand the friendship in some way because I felt that Lucy was just very, very, very needy and manipulative and Anne and, all, and the rest of Lucy's friends were very enabling and I just, I was like yelling at my car at times because I was like, why is she being so needy? Like she, Anne's trying to have a conversation with someone and Lucy like comes and sits on her lap and is like, you love me best, right? And I'm like, dude, she's trying to have a conversation. Like it's not all about you, but for her it was and I just I guess I just didn't really like Lucy and that was a big part of like that's the story it's Lucy's story and that friendship it's a story of their friendship and so it was just kind of hard to get 
around that and some of her decisions. I think I was just annoyed for everybody else in her life that she was still kind of pulling this, this stuff and I was like, ah, get over it. But again, Anne is a fantastic writer and so I still really enjoyed it. I just didn't really like Lucy, so I gave it a three and a half. Next up was my final audiobook and that was, which I actually read before, Truth and Beauty, but grouping, anyway. I also listened to Lincoln and the Bargo by George Saunders, which I did not enjoy. I will tell you that right now. It takes place in the in 1860s when Abraham Lincoln, his son, Willie, has died. And the entire thing takes place in one night and it's the night when they take Willie Lincoln to the graveyard to be buried and he is greeted by all of these like ghosts and people who don't necessarily believe or admit that they are dead and but it also has stories of the night of Willie's death itself and like these different accounts but it's very strange the entire thing is told in dialogue and so the audiobook definitely helped with that because I feel like if you're gonna read it, you have to listen to the audiobook because it has the different, it has like 80 something narrators. So it's, or like more than that, it's a, it's a ton of narrators, which helps you kind of keep the character straight and figure out who is talking and, and what's going on. But it's just very odd. There are sections when it's just like historical accounts of like the dining room with the party that night and someone says like a snippet and then this person says a snippet and it tells you where it came from and some of them are real and some of them are fake. It's just strange and I did not enjoy it and I felt like some of the characterizations were weird and like trying too hard to be controversial and different and I was just like one of the main characters walks around with an erection the entire time and they keep mentioning it and I'm just like why? Like what is the point of this? So anyway, I only gave it two stars. I get that it's experimental, but I I didn't enjoy it. I had a hard time like finishing it. And finally, I also read the final two books in the Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. So I read the very first one, The Final Empire. It was my first book of the year in January. So in May, I finished the series and I read both The Well of Ascension and The Hero of Ages to reach like 730 pages. So that was fun. That was a lot of my reading time, but all of these books are very similar for me as far as structure and pacing and like how much I enjoy them. They all start off kind of really intense and they end like super intense with like twists that I didn't see coming, which is rare and I'm just like blown away by, but the middle is very kind of slow for me. It's interesting and I really like the characters and the story and the magic and everything, but the middles just drag a little bit, especially at 730 pages or so. There, it can take a little while, but the end, I always rush through the last like 200 pages because it's like the big battle scene and everybody's coming out and all the secrets are coming out. And so, yeah, I really enjoyed it overall. I gave Well of Ascension four and a half and I gave Hero of Ages five. So I think I have two four and a halfs and, and one five. So it ended on a really good note. I just recommend the series if you like fantasy, epic fantasy, high fantasy. It starts a little YA because the main character is only like 16 at the time, but by the end of the series, she's in her early 20s. But it kind of, it's a mix. I would say it's a good blend of YA and adult fantasy. It's really good. The characters are all fantastic. The, the setting, the world building, everything is fantastic, is amazing. I was a little disappointed with some of the characters in the third one just because I felt like they weren't utilized as much as they possibly could have been especially some of my favorites but I still really enjoyed them and I really enjoyed the series and now I'm in a bit of reading slump because like what do I follow that with I don't I don't know I don't know well, that is it for my May reading wrap up. Let me know your thoughts on any of these books and what your favorite book that you read in May was and what I can read to maybe get over the Mistborn slump. So yeah, thanks for watching and that's it for me today. I'll see you next time.